when you're dating right now, navigating this whole thing, it's good not, if you're a woman, it's good not to pursue men that you're more interested in them than they're interested in you. You need to continually watch that. If you're ever more interested in him than he's interested in you, you're going to be trying to get him to like you. And that is going to keep him from liking you. The dance between men and women is she gives signals. And then he that says, if you pursued me, I would be open. I would be interested. And then he takes a step and then there's an opening and he takes another step and there's a little reciprocity, but never pursuing him more than he pursues you. And, and, you know, you see some guy, you go, oh, I want to be with him. How do I get to be with him? Whatever. And he's not putting out signals that he's thinking about you. You can put yourself in front of him in some way, but let him know you're available. That's it. There'd be some possibility because a lot of men today, they're so on their female side, they're insecure. You know, it used to be you just twirled your hair and a guy went, hey, how you doing there, girl? <laughs> you know? But men, men are insecure now. And they, for a lot of practical reasons, as well as impractical reasons, their testosterone is just so low. Uh, and so they're not, they're not, you know, when I was a little guy, you know, uh, I was always afraid of approaching the girl I wanted to have sex with because I felt a little guilty just wanting to have sex with her. Because uh, that's my instincts were saying, boy, I want to see what's under the clothes. And then I felt guilty about that. So I didn't pursue her. And, 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 but I would have friends with girls, but the girls I really liked. And that's what you have to know about men today as well is sometimes the one they really are interested in, they don't approach her because he also feels this sexual drive and you're a pig if you want to have sex. You know, that it's, you know, it's a lot of confusion around all this stuff. So, but for women, the key is, absent father daddy issues and all that stuff tends to cause you to be turned on right away to the man who's the wrong guy for you uh it really you want to first ultimately not that everything turns out this way but you want to go through your filters of in your mind you feel a connection and excitement to be with him he's interesting he's brilliant he's charming he's uh makes you feel curiosity and you want to get to know him. And you also want him to know you. There's a knowing of who this person is. Then there's a emotional surge in response to him doing things for you. So he does things for you and, and you accept it and you appreciate it. And you find that you're happy around him. He makes you feel delighted. That's called becoming mentally naked and emotionally naked, then physically naked. And that won't happen if you're trying to pursue him. And so a way to start with all these ideas is you're going to be taking this whole course with Michelle. So many things to learn. Start dating men who are more interested in you than you're interested in them. That frees you from any people pleaser part of you because that just comes in automatically. It's like an instinct. So he's interested in you. You practice the new skills of being in relationship, saying no, asking for what you want. Uh, sharing feelings. It's not a big deal. A lot of the things we've been talking about today, you can practice that like with a safety net, which is that if he loses interest in you, great, next. It wasn't like you were that interested in him. You're giving him a chance to win you over. And there's a real truth to that. That's not a manipulation. That's really where you are as a woman. The female side of you should feel so supported by him if you want to have a bonding experience. The male side of him should feel not that you are so successful in making him happy. He is successful in making you happy. And that becomes a source of his happiness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I think as if women over function or over give in an early stage of relationship, it can throw that balance off. And we tend to attract people, men that are under functioning or, or under giving or are takers and I, it seems to me, John, like once a couple or two people kind of start doing a certain dance together or they get in a certain routine, it seems hard to switch out of that. Yeah. And often the love you feel is not real because you're in the wrong routine. I mm -hmm. mean, it's not just about behavior. It's about really getting to know someone. But then the other side of it is I always say to women, don't rush to get married to a guy. All your negotiating power happens after you get engaged, even before that. Once you're married, your negotiation power drops dramatically it's still you're still there okay you always have that power but beforehand it's it's much easier this is where you you can find your best self which is you create a series of positive dating experiences where you're not really thinking 
this is the perfect person. Because once you're with the perfect person, all your stuff comes up, insecurities come up. What if I say the wrong thing? What if they don't like this? What about that? So, but if you found that person, they found you and you're there, you can still practice these things. But if you were to come to my house and see it, you think what a beautiful house I have. And yet, if you wanted to come by my house, you would hire people to see what's wrong with it. And that's what happens to men and it happens to women. Once you start dating and you get start to get serious, then you hire people and your brain hires, okay, but what about this? And what about this? And what about this? And at that time, men will start to pull away and it's really easy for other women uh, to that they're other women that they haven't yet got to that stage with to seem very appealing because he's not looking at what's wrong with them. He's looking at what's wrong with you. So you, you want to create, you want to slowly build this bond. So you have all these positive experiences because that's inevitably going to happen when you start thinking, I want to buy this house, so to speak. Then you're, your brain will go into and what's wrong with it? What are the potential consequences? I mean, literally, when you buy a house today, you hire people to come in and find out everything that's wrong. Mm -hmm. That's what happens. So you, you don't want to rush into anything. And the other thing I wanted to say is, you know, that it's a real thing. One of the major concepts of men are from Mars is that men are like rubber bands. They get really close and then they pull back and then they get really close and pull back. And the closer they get, the farther they're going to pull away. Uh so you, in the beginning, you don't want to just suddenly just have sex three days, you know, or spend three days away, you know, eventually you can, that's a lot of intimacy with a guy. It's going to be a lot of estrogen. He's going to recoil. He's going to pull away, detach a lot. And you're going to feel very insecure because he just broke that bond. And so at that time, you might make the mistake of communicating with him. It's like, what's the matter? What's going on? You were so wonderful. Now you're so cold and detached. Oh, another unemotionally a man. No, it's just you spent too much time together. He has to pull back. So you really want to build it. That's why you date on the weekend. Go out on a date. That's it in the beginning. Well, let's go Tuesday night. Let's do Wednesday night. Let's do this. Uh, <laughs> Just say, well, I'm really busy. I'm really busy, but we can do next next Friday or next Saturday. You know, just slow it down, slow it down, forces him to slow it down and get to know you more. You can talk to each other on the phone. You can text each other. And I, that's all great stuff. It's the physical contact where you get physically intimate too much, too soon causes men to repel too far and causes you to become needy in many cases. Mm -hmm. And when they're when they're doing that rubber band thing and or maybe going into the cave, that's also when sometimes they realize the depths of their feelings for a woman and how much they miss her. Right. They also can get in touch with that. Exactly. You know, the rubber band has more to do with cave time. He can just be busy working. He runs right. out of testosterone. He needs to have his time away. But rubber band is primarily because he feels very close to you, relationships going good. I really like you. Maybe I'm starting to feel love for you. That's a lot of estrogen. And so he needs to, he'll instinctively pull back. He doesn't understand why that's happening. And sometimes he makes the mistake of thinking, well, I guess she's not right for me. Just as if he pulls back, you might make the mistake of thinking, well, I guess he doesn't love me. And then you go tell him <laughs> disaster. Uh, but if he, it, you know, some guys don't pull back. They just want to, you know, these are the more in touch with their female side guys. They're going to, they can be very romantic. They can be very exciting. They can be very funny. They're very attentive. And then it's a big bang and then they're gone. They just poof, they disappear. And so what you do for those guys is, you enjoy them, but then you have such a busy life that maybe next Saturday we can do it again or on Wednesday we'll do it again. But they're going to push for more and more and more. And to a woman, that just seems like this is who this guy is. That's who he is. He's Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. It, although it's really not the best analogy. He's <laughs> Mr. Romantic and Mr. Go Back to Sleep. Uh, <laughs> don't, don't let him exhaust himself giving to you. Don't let him go so far to his female side that he has to recoil. And that's that, that truth is why it was done in the past, play hard to get. It's, mm -hmm. it's, like, it's not play hard to get. Recognize that too much of a good thing is not a good thing right away. And then once you're married, too much of a good thing is not good right away, which is why, why you don't, you know, what do you don't do? What you don't do is expect your partner to be all romantic and attentive and affectionate all the time. And that's another problem that happens when couples move in together. He's living in a separate apartment, house, whatever, and you're over here. So you're not together all the time. So he has a chance to back up and go get 
go back up and go in, go back up. And, and you are forced, in a sense, by that dynamic to attach to him and then detach. You're forced to detach and connect with other things. Women need attachment to a lot of things. Men primarily just need attachment to you. Okay, so we're really different, but then we get too much and then we come back and now we're wanting to have our results and success and all of that stuff in our life. So that's the dynamic. Don't give him into what he wants. It's always what you want. And I know that also you want to be loved. And so you think being loved is to give him what he wants. He'll be happy. He'll love you more. It just doesn't work that way. It works when you create enough distance from him so he can spring back to you and create distance and spring back. And quite often couples, in order to create that distance, if they don't consciously see what's happening, is then they create these big arguments and fights and then they pull away and then they make up and they have great sex for a while and then they make up <laughs> and and it, it's it, it over time it will kill the relationship at least the passion in the relationship because arguments and fights over time cause you to lose trust and you mm -hmm. start walking on minefields to avoid yes anytime you express a lot of emotion there's vulnerability with that and sex can be great but it will what prevents it from lasting a lifetime is uh, having to walk on minefields.